Hey, what is up guys? So I got something very cool to share with you Dragon fans today because I'm not sure if you guys remember that Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon. Once that card got announced that it was coming out for TCG, I think a lot of players were like, wow, that's so cool. I really want to check out that card. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a really sweet replay and then I'll kind of break down and explain things that I'll also give you guys a deck profile for it. But uh, as soon as this card over here, the number 95 Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon, don't worry, we'll go over all the effects in just a moment. I'm just going to play the replay real quick. But um, when this card got announced, everyone's like, oh my gosh, this card is absolutely amazing in Dragon Rulers. And it was. But then Dragon Rulers got banned, and so you can't really do that. Now this OTK is actually pretty darn consistent. Basically, all you need is a rank up card. Other than that, you're seeing the Heretic cards, which of course you have three copies of a Searcher, and of course you can play multiple copies of each one. And it's really easy. All you really need to do is bust out an Atom and then have a rank up in hand, and you will do upwards of 15k damage. Now, um, he could probably, if he didn't go for some of these other cards, um, he could probably actually finish him off. He was actually just 500 short of uh, finishing it off, but obviously, if he has some Light Ray Diablos, perhaps instead of this, he'd be able to game him. But uh, nonetheless, You'd be able to OTK people through tag duels with this. And keep in mind, you can still pop a card with one of the uh, Galaxy Eyes that you overlay on top of overlay. But anyways, let's go ahead and break it down now so you guys can actually understand what the heck just happened in case it was just too fast for you. And then we'll go ahead and do a deck profile. Alright, so let's go ahead and slow it down and we'll kind of explain what's going on. So the Cyber Dragon Core, we're going to go ahead and search out a card. It's pretty much irrelevant if they only have one uh, card on field because you're going to be able to get rid of a card. So it's a pretty standard play over here where he's going to go ahead and summon one of the Heretics. Now, it's important just to be able to get a level 6 out. All you gotta do is make a Tom. I'm sure that's very, very easy for you to do in like 99% of the uh, opening hands in the Heretics. So that's basically what they want to do. Then, uh, you have some options here. He's gonna go ahead and uh, bust out a Genesis Dragon. Now, Genesis Dragon, um, I think this is an older card, but this one's pretty you can send one Dragon-type monster from your hand to the graveyard. Add one dragon type monster from your hand, uh, graveyard to your hand. When this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can return all dragon type monsters from your graveyard to your deck, which is actually really useful if maybe you've exhausted a lot of your cards, because a lot of times the, you can go through your extra deck relatively quick with the heretic dragons. Anyways, he's going to go ahead and activate the rank up magic Astral force. So basically, this is the only card you need to draw, other than, of course, having heretics to be able to make a ton, which is basically every hand anyway. So basically, I mean, you do re it requires three cards, but essentially, you just need the rank up card. I'm wondering if there's some card to actually search this card up. Anyways, he's going to go ahead and bust out uh, a 107. Then he's going to go ahead and bust out the Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Dragon, which actually has a pretty good effect. It's once per turn you can detach one material from this card, uh, then target one face up card your opponent controls, destroy it, and it's also got 4,000 attack. Pretty nasty here, but he's going to go ahead and actually uh, rank up on top of that, or XYZs for days. And then he's going to bust out the card that everyone was super excited about, and there's so many crazy things to uh, abuse this card with, but when the Dragon Rulers got hit, uh, obviously that took a big hit for this deck. But anyways, uh, when this card is exceeded summoned, you get to send three Dragon-type monsters with different names from your deck to the Graver. So he's going to go ahead and activate that effect. He's actually going to go ahead and send the um, White Stone and Eclipse Wyvern and then a Pulsar. Usually you want to send these. Uh, these are the, the key cards you want to send. White Pulsar, it depends on like your hand and stuff like that. So he's going to go ahead and activate Wyvern's effect as well as the uh, White Stone's effect. Now what's really cool with Genesis Dragon is you can send one Dragon Time Monster from your hand to the graveyard, then you could re-add one back. So even though he has Red Eyes in hand, he could have just sent Red Eyes and then basically added it back anyway. So, even though he's going to be using Red Eyes, it's pretty much irrelevant if you draw or not, which makes his deck so much more consistent. So he's going to go ahead and get rid of the Blue Eyes because he got that card for free. And then he's going to go ahead and re-add a card, and then he's going to go ahead and summon Pulsar, and then he's going to be able to re-add the Diablos that he got uh, with the um, other effect. And now you can see he's just going back to uh, XYZs for XYZs, and he's making another copy of number 95. Sorry, that was real fast. Like, the, uh, the game was just too fast for me. But anyways, you can basically see the concepts of it. And then he's going to go ahead and banish the Pulsar to special summon the Red Ice Darkness Metal Dragon. Then he can bring back Genesis Dragon. Genesis Dragon can now reactivate its effect again. Go ahead and send Blue Eyes, add back the Pulsar, summon another um, copy of Light Pulsar. And also, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but he uh, banished the uh, Wyvern. That's how he added uh, this card. But um, very, very strong stuff. And now he's just going to go ahead and finish it off for a game over here. But yeah, that was just short 500 damage of 16k. But um, he could probably, I mean, if he had extra room, right, he could probably summon uh, more cards. Let's see, it's this is a, is a five or more light monsters with, I think it's this one card, different names, um, with different names. And I'm pretty sure he's got one, two, three, four, and four. 
I think he's got four right now. But nonetheless, he pretty much had game anyways. Uh, well, obviously he had super game, but in tag duels, he could probably finish it off if he just uh, did something a little bit different. But very, very cool deck, Mr. Black and White. If you guys want the deck profile, I'll go ahead and share it with you guys real quick. Alright guys, so this is Mr. Black and White's deck as is. This is the one that uh, we just saw, and uh, it's pretty cool. I like the idea of Genesis Dragon. I thought this card has way, way amazing synergy uh, in this deck, just because you can get whatever dragon you want. It's basically like a reinforcement of the army for dragons, because you get to send three dragons to the graveyard with the effect of uh, number 95. So this is his deck profile, like he said, um... I didn't make any changes to it. I think we can make this a little bit better though. But anyways, let's go and jump right into it. So first off, he's got two copies of Blue Eyes, um, one Labyrinth Dragon, one Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, one Light Ray Diablos, one Pulsar, uh, one Aether the Wicked Empowering Dragon. This card's actually pretty cool. He didn't use it, but uh, it's it's got an awesome effect. It's this card is normal or special summon you target one monster on the field and banish that target, and it doesn't have to come back or anything. And it's got decent attack too. I really, really like this card. I'm wondering uh, if this is going to go well with like the new like Chaos Dragons that they're uh, trying to support. Uh, then we also have, of course, the Genesis Dragon. I love this tech in the deck. And uh, then we got uh, three copies of Sue, which is pretty normal for like, you know, Herax. And we got three copies of Tefnuit, three copies of a set, and uh, that's going to round it off for the, um, the Heretics. And then uh, we got Eclipse Wyvern. We got two copies of those, uh, two card card Ds, one Galaxy Eyes Cloud Dragon, which actually is a pretty interesting effect. Uh, I don't think he used it during the duel, but anyways, you can tribute this card to special one Galaxy Eyes monster from your hand or graveyard, except for Galaxy Eyes Cloud Dragon. You can only use this effect of him once per turn, and if this card is sent to the graveyard, oh, I'm sorry, if, if it's in the graveyard, you can target one Galaxy Eyes XYZ monster you control and you can attach it to its material. You can only use the effect of Galaxy Eyes Cloud Dragon once per duel, but nonetheless, it's got a pretty decent effect. Uh, next up, uh, I, I wish it was also a tuner. But anyways, we got two of the uh, White Stone of Legend. This card is actually a tuner, although he has no synchros. And then he's got one copy of Magical Mallet, uh, three copies of Heretic Seal of Convocation, one One Day, uh, I always say at peace, but it's of peace. Then we got three copies of Ring Cup Magic Astral Force, two copies of Pot of Duality, three copies of Reckless Greed, and three copies of Trap Stun. Um, as far as the extra, it goes three copies of number 95, Three copies of Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Phonon Dragon, or Photon Dragon, and then uh, one, two copies of 107, two Gaia Dragon, the Thunder Charger, two M7s, three copies of Atum. I think maybe he was just trying out other things. One suggestion that I have for this guy is that you can definitely run Upstart Goblin here. You're doing upwards of, you know, 14, 15,000 damage. Uh, so Upstart would be an excellent card for you to run. That way you wouldn't have to wait a turn. Cards like Pot of Duality, uh, cards like Carker D, they make you wait a turn. And with this deck, you don't really want to be uh, waiting too many turns. Uh, maybe like one turn you can, you know, go for Carker D, that's fine. But, um... Uh, Another card that I don't think a lot of players uh, have been playing is a card called Swift Scarecrow. Um, Swift Scarecrow is excellent because it prevents you from dying and you don't have to th use any of your other cards. And you can still maybe set your uh, Trap Stone or something like that for next turn. Trap Stone is an excellent card, especially when you're going for these super, super OTKs. Um, another card I actually recommend any OTK base deck um, to run is a uh, Maxi. Maxi is really good because obviously um, if you're not doing anything, sometimes your opponent, they might not want to go for game. They'll be like, oh, he just maxied me. I'm not going to let him draw 20 cards. But keep in mind, if you add max C, you do want something to draw into so you prevent yourself from losing. Those cards can be things like Battle Fader. Those things can be like Swift Scarecrow. But I don't re recommend you to play Battle Fader. Uh, the reason why I don't think Battle Fader is that great in a Heretic deck is because you want to be able to uh, Special Summon Tefnuit. Uh, through its effect of if your opponent controls the monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon it. So, uh, you saw that extensive play he made, right? You can actually do that entire play without your normal summon. So that can actually extend your plays even further. Although there's not really too many strong things that I think you'd want a normal summon in this deck. Maybe you can tribute summon, you know, after or something. But I think for the most part, like, the thing that's going to use it most attacks is probably like the Eclipse Wyvern, which is kind of sad. But, um, I don't know. You can kind of mix and see what you like. Um, but definitely I recommend you to play upstarts before adding cards like Pot of Duality or cards like Car Card D. I think Car Card D probably is, uh, I don't know if it's better than Duality. I mean, Duality you get to add one, this one is just two. Um, one thing that I want to, want to mention with Duality, Duality does reveal what deck you're playing. Like, if you go for a first turn, uh, set Trap Stun, set Reckless Greed, summon Car Card D, uh, 
tribute card card, they're not going to know what the heck you're playing. Whereas when you activate a card like Dual, they're going to be like, oh, I see that he's playing Heretics. I know exactly how to play against the deck, or I'm just not going to throw out anything on the field until I know I have a uh, game and I'm just going to OTK them, hopefully. But yeah, uh, anyways, thank you, Mr. Black and White, for sending in this replay. It was really cool, and also th thanks for sending it in the deck profile. Well, I mean, I can take it from the... Uh, the actual like raw file, but I guess he was actually trying out clearing the Synchro Dragon Power Tool and uh, the Power Tool Mecha Dragon as well as a uh, Stoic Challenge because you can do some nasty things with this card and then Symbols of Heritage as well as Galaxy Zero. Galaxy Zero is actually like a well, it's, you can definitely run it, but I think it's a, he found out that it was a win harder card in this specific build. Like this card is pretty darn good, and I, I played a lot of Dark Matter decks, but uh, they all involved more broken stuff because uh, we had the Dragon Rulers at that time. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. And if you guys want to go ahead and download the YDK file, I'll also add that into the description box. But thanks for watching, guys. It's been your boy Will Smith signing out.